Well, we're on the road. The first day of our long trip, and uh, we got out of the campground where we've been staging the vehicle without too many problems. And the dogs are hooked in, and we are going to make our first stop be the most important stop of the day. What are we going to get, Kathy? Coffee. Coffee. Hi, I'm Jeff. Kathy's on the camera. This is Miles and Smiles. One of the reasons we're RVing is that we want to see America from the ground level. And what you can see out the front window right now is exactly what we mean. We could have stayed on Interstate 95 and had all the traffic at Baltimore and everything, but Kathy helped us find this uh, this back road. And what a beautiful state Maryland is. We are filling up with Flying J. Flying J stations are really, really popular with our viewers because uh, two things. First of all, they often have dedicated RV lanes, which this is. And second, because if you're a member of the Good Sam RV Club, you get an extra five cents per gallon uh, off of the gas price, which means that our cost for gas at this station was $2.23 instead of like two fifty-five dollars in a lot of other places that we saw. We've already made a couple of mistakes today. <laughs> We, uh, let's see, we forgot to take the easy pass out of the car, so we paid twice for our short stint on the New Jersey Turnpike. And then uh, we, uh, what was our second mistake, Con? We were in Lake Apatcong, New Jersey, and I accidentally ordered our coffee in Sparta, New Jersey, which is about 50 miles away. A little stressful getting started the first day out. This is not where we were headed. We went past it. We need to get back that way. So what's happening is that Kathy is going uh, down the road in just the Jeep. We just detached the Jeep from the back of the RV and she is exploring and finding out where the farm is. And once she's found where the farm is, then I will follow her there and uh, everything will be just fine. Problem is, I'd have to just sit here and wait while she does that, and I do not do sitting still and waiting very, very well. Mm -mm, no. Lori and her husband are the owners of Cabin Creek Heritage Farm here yep. in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Uh -huh. How did you guys get into farming? Um, it's something that we always wanted to do. We um, we knew if we we didn't know anything about farming other than I like to be outside and garden and things like that. Um, and I, you know, my heritage, I have American Indian in me, so I don't know if there's something to do with you know connection um, to the land or anything like that, but. Um, it uh, has always drawn us. And we had somewhat of a Noah's Ark when we first started back in 2000. We had some sheep and we had ducks and we had chickens and we had we wanted to get some goats to clear the land. Well, they came with two pot belly pigs and we said, we don't want pot belly pigs. We just want some goats. Well, it's a package deal. So we had these two huge pot belly pigs, didn't know what to do with them. But we started uh, farming sustainably with livestock to give folks an option for um, healthy meat 
clean meeps they call it, um, without the use of um, steroids, antibiotics, or hormones, or pesticides, or any of that, um, as an alternative. And we, I would say 75% of our customer base um, purchase from us, direct consumer, we are direct to consumer, purchase from us for health reasons. And that old saying, that old adage, you know, you are what you eat. Well, we are also what the animals eat. Um, so if you think about it like that, you have to be careful um, about like buzzwords on packaging and you know. So we run woodland pork, um, we source beef and lamb, we run our own lamb, we have our own pasture raised chickens and um, for meat birds, we raise rabbit for meat and we have laying hens. Um, hey, you mentioned that uh you mentioned that, that there was a lot of woods, and you told yes. us that you used those in a very, to me, it seems like a very, very creative way. What, yes. what, what lives in the woods? Okay, so in the woods, we have our pork, we have our hogs, we have our woodland hogs. Um, pigs can get sunburn, pigs sweat, so that's why they need mud holes. So living in the woods is their, their personal savanna. They can, it's cool in the woods, they can root around, they get acorns that drop naturally, they have all the woodland forage that they can, can eat. If we keep them on pasture, um, we have to provide shade for them and they would just root up every, you wouldn't have pasture left. Um, so this is close to their natural environment as they can get. And we raise Berkshire hogs. Um, which are known for their marbling throughout. So they make wonderful pork chops and bacon and you know, all the good sausage and everything like that. So that's what lives in our woods. You mentioned sustainable mm -hmm. farming. Can yes. you give us a definition of exactly what that means? Yeah, sustainable is um, the humans, the animals, and the land working together um, to, to, for the health of the soil, for the health of animals and um, the ease of ease of the humans that we are all working together to, to so you're not um, ruining your land and you're not creating more works for instance we have um, rabbits our breeding stock in um, breeding cages and their dung falls to the ground and our chickens are allowed to go in there and scratch and break that down for compost. Um, we're a working farm so we are open to the public one day a week Saturdays 10 to 2 year round or by appointment um, if Saturday isn't isn't um, good for you and they can come um, we don't charge for tours we are very um, it's very important to us to to um, education I would say is very important to us. So. What's your website? Website is cabincreekheritagefarm.com uh, email info at cabincreekheritagefarm.com and all that's going to be right on the screen underneath you while you're talking. Great and it's been a pleasure thank you for coming appreciate um, everything putting this on your YouTube and I hope um, folks learn a little bit and thank you. <laughs>